Okay, so this is the follow-up video for um, insulin resistance. And what we're talking about in this section is the glycemic index and the glycemic load of food and um, what you need to know about managing that in your body. So once again, what happens is if you have foods that release their sugar very quickly into your bloodstream, then what happens is you get a peak in sugar in your bloodstream. Your body doesn't like to have too much sugar floating around in the blood. It gives you a peak of insulin unless you're diabetic and you can't produce insulin, but that's another story. So you get a peak of insulin in your bloodstream. Insulin then tells the cells in your body to open up, to let in the sugar, muscle cells and fat cells. And so um, because you've got this massive amount of insulin going in to manage the massive amount of sugar, the sugar drops very, very quickly. And when the sugar drops very quickly, um, you can get the side effects of having low blood sugar. And so if you had seriously low blood sugar, that would be um, hyper hypoglycemic. <laughs> if you got very low blood sugar, you'd be hypoglycemic. And a hypoglycemic state can actually be quite um, uncomfortable and um, even quite dangerous to the body if um, you've got a problem long term. So um, some of the side effects of having very, very low blood sugar in your body could be uh, headaches. I used to get headaches day in and day out for years and years and years until I discovered that this was the cause. Fixed it like that, so do not despair. Um, so you can get headaches. You could be inclined to get that sort of mid-morning shake, you know, when you feel like you really need to have something, something sweet preferably. That's because your sugar is low. Many, many people get very moody when they um, are low in blood sugar and so they're, they're very grumpy and they're very snappish in fact I have a friend who could rip your head off in one minute and then she'll eat and then she's like oh sorry 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 so her husband always says to her um, maybe we should just have dinner before we discuss this <laughs> very wise man anyway so that's the kind of thing that can happen you can get really really irritable and moody if your blood sugar is very low um, so this kind of crash of your blood sugar, what normally happens is that people have an instinct that what they need is they need something to increase their blood sugar. So the first thing that you tend to reach for is a cookie or a Coke or a coffee with some sugar in it or something to stimulate because you've got this low energy level and the shaky feeling inside. And so what of course happens is you start the cycle of very, very high blood sugar, very high insulin, very low blood sugar, low insulin, boom, 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 boom the whole day. It's uncomfortable. It's unpleasant, it's unnecessary, it's not good for your body, and most importantly, uh, it leads you to crave foods that are inappropriate. So you crave sweet foods, you crave foods that give you a very quick energy release, you crave um, junk food, basically, you know, fizzy cool drinks and uh, sweeties and, and, and cookies and all that kind of rubbish. So if you want um, to avoid that, and if you are battling with your weight, I suggest, strongly suggest that this is the route that you start. If you want to avoid that, what you have to do is you have to introduce a low GI diet into your lifestyle. And a low GI diet is actually really, really easy to follow. It's not a, you know, a diet of that kind at all. Um, but it is a, a sort of a way of eating that makes sure that you're getting a very slow, very consistent release of sugar into your bloodstream at all times. So you're not getting this up, down, up, down, up, down thing that's leading to cravings and inappropriate eating. What instead you're getting is this low level of sugar release all the time. So you've got constantly good energy. You never get this down phase where you get the shakes. You don't get to this point where you get a headache and you can't get out of it. You don't get grumpy um, and you've constantly got great energy in your body. So the way that it works is this. GI, glycemic index, is a measurement of the speed at which food is digested to release sugar into your body. It's the speed at which the food releases its sugar into the bloodstream, okay? So something that is high GI releases its sugar very quickly into the bloodstream and something that is low GI releases the sugar very slowly into the bloodstream. So um, a high GI food um, would be something, for instance, like dates. A low GI food would be something, for instance, like chickpeas. Dates are good for you. I'm not saying that dates are bad for you. Fruit is good for you. I'm not saying the fruit is, although, you know, there's a big debate about that too, but <laughs> I think fruit is good for you. So um, it's not a question of 
healthy food or unhealthy food when we're talking about GI and GL. It's a question of how quickly the food releases its sugar into your bloodstream and how you manage the speed at which sugar is coming into your system. And when I talk about sugar, I'm talking about glucose energy, essentially. Okay, so anything that has carbohydrate in it releases um, glucose energy. It gets broken down into glucose and you get this high level of glucose energy. I've been calling it sugar in your system. So um, when you eat something low GI, it releases slowly into your system. When you eat something high GI, it releases quickly into your system. And you can get what's called a GI index off the internet. They're very easy to come by. And the GI in index will give you um, an idea of how quickly or how slowly food releases into your system based on a number. So if you took uh, chickpeas, for instance, they're quite a low number, probably somewhere between 20 and 30, I don't know offhand. And if you took something like a date, it's quite a high number. I know the dates are like 106. Now normally the, the scale just goes up to 100, so 106 is high. Um, so if you wanted to eat a date, then what you would have to do is you'd have to say, well, I've got this thing that's likely to spike my sugar. In order to not get this radical drop of sugar to a point where my sugar is low, I need to eat this date in, um, in connection with something that releases the sugar slowly. So the date comes into your bloodstream, it peaks the sugar, and the apple comes into your bloodstream slowly, slowly, slowly. So while the sugar from the date is dropping off, the apple is still putting sugar into your bloodstream. So it's not that you can't eat foods, that are high GI. It's just that if you eat a food that is high GI, you should eat it in connection with a food that is low GI so that you can get a balanced um, amount of sugar coming. So when they talk about GI load, that's kind of what they're talking about. They're talking about the amount of blood sugar in total and the speed at which it produces this glucose energy from something that you're eating. So um, it's kind of tricky to understand, but if you talk about a watermelon, it's considered to have a very high GI, but because a watermelon is basically water, you have to eat a hell of a lot of it in order to get the sugar or the glucose energy out of the watermelon. So it actually doesn't have such a very high glycemic load because by amount, it's not releasing that much energy. It, in, in its own right, has a lot of glucose energy available from it, but because you can only eat so much watermelon, there's not that much coming out of the watermelon in total. So the most important thing to then focus on is actually the glycemic load of a food. So I have a really amazing book. It's um, called, I think it's called the South African Glycemic Index and Glycemic Load Guide. Um, so if you're in South Africa and you're looking for an understanding of what the South African foods available on the market have, this book is pretty comprehensive. It was written by somebody called Gabby Steenkamp and somebody else, I'm sorry for the other author whose name I've forgotten. Um, but you can look up uh, Gabby Steen Camp and have a look for the South African Guide to um, GI Index and GI Load. It's called something like that. And that book is really comprehensive. It's got pretty much any food that you would like to eat based on what the load is, what the glycemic index is, what portion size they're talking about, um, whether it's uh, green food in their little book, which means that it's, it's nice and low, or an orange food, which means it's a bit higher, or a red food, which means it's really high. And they also have a little index section in there that says, um, you know, this is what kind of load you need to have for breakfast. No more than 25 on the glycemic load list, less than, uh, less than 25, preferably no more than 20, ideally. And then for a mid-morning snack, no more than 10, and for lunch and so on. So how I eat, according to the whole GI thing, is that I eat pretty much every two and a half hours. And it really works for my um, constitution because I have a lot of energy and I expend a lot of energy during the day. So I need a constant level of energy coming into my system. So I'll eat low GI foods, particularly in the morning. If I eat a high GI food in the morning, I'm absolutely wrecked for the day. So I'll eat low GI or low GL combinations in the morning. Um, and I'll eat a small portion because that's all I know. I, I need to eat because I know that in two and a half hours or so, I'm gonna eat again. And so there's no stress to fill up. And I'll eat every two and a half to three hours almost without fail through the day. So I'll eat, you know, four, five, six times a day, depending on what my schedule's like. And that really works for me. So people always say to me, oh, you know, you've always got so much energy. You're always, you're always bouncing around the place. Well, partly that's because um, my muscles are able to take in the glucose energy well. So it gives me a lot of glucose energy to work on um, with my muscles. They're very responsive to insulin. And... It's partly because I'm constantly got this low level of energy coming into my body because I'm sustaining my, my eating all day long like a grazer. 
So I hope that that made sense to you and I hope that's helpful to you. Um, just remember that uh, you can get these these glycemic indexes off the internet, you can get um, information about glycemic load off the internet, um, or you can get this book which I highly recommend having just available to you, um, South African Index of GI, the South African Guide to GI Index and GI Load, which has really been amazing for me. And just make sure that you're eating low GI, low GL combinations, especially early on in the day, and then if you have a little bit higher sugar later on the day, it probably won't be a problem. Have a fabulous day and good luck with low GI eating.